In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper, the host of this program, known here on social media, wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, mighty, mighty. Mm. Angel Snub Nub Seven, I am your soul brother. Number one. Welcome to this spontaneous broadcast. Welcome to this spontaneous rant. Ah! Now, those of you who are familiar, when I do that, there's something that grinds my 
gears. Woo! I just want to rant. I just want to rant. I just want to knock the, the dirt off my shoulder. I just want to rant. Now, how we want to get this commentary started? Look, look at him. Look, 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 look at him. I have some grand relatives and uh, I'm gonna, I want to use them as an example. These are children under the age of 18. These are, these are children and you have to give children an opportunity to mature, an opportunity, uh, to, uh, 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 an opportunity to grow like all of us, their children. It's up to adults, it's up to the parents. As the scriptures say, your Bible, even perhaps the Quran would agree that you would want, it is up to the adults to guide the children in the right manner so they can be the best adult, the best human being they could be. Now, so it's not their fault they are in a process of growing. Unfortunately, there are adults who did not learn this lesson. So if, if the adult becomes a parent, and the parent did not learn no better, what do you expect from our children? And this is one of the reasons why all over America, you find our children in such a messed up condition. Even to the point, the only way we can communicate and talk with the children, it is suggested that we give them drugs. We give them narcotics to slow them down, to tranquilize them because they are too hyper. They suffer from ADHXDX. And we have to tranquilize them. The beginning of showing the child if you want to solve your problem, if you want to feel better, turn to drugs. It's legal drugs right now. And you are buying your drugs and you're getting your drugs from legal drug dealers. But soon the child will begin to lust and yearn for illegal drugs because they are more powerful and it's just more cool. They will find out they are more cool. It's more hip to smoke the weed. I've never seen adults gone crazy over drugs. I believe it is the Dutch or Switzerland, one of those European countries, they just legalized marijuana and everybody is so happy. They're not happy because we finally solve the homeless problem. We finally don't have to give our children ADHDX drugs. They're not celebrating the murder rate has gone down. They're not celebrating that we have more college graduates ever. They're not celebrating the end of war. They are celebrating, uh, they are celebrating I can smoke me some weed legally. Dope fiends all over the earth, drug addicts. And they use drugs and we use drugs not for medicinal purposes. They're using the drugs to escape the reality of life. We use drugs, we use pornography, we use alcohol. I just want to have fun. Adults. 
So it's no shock what we see in the children because they learn it from the mama. They learn it from the daddy that it's fun to drink. Even the rich, happy. You would think that money makes you happy, but I'm, I'm happier because I can afford to buy all the liquor, all the drugs, all the porn that I need. And then they cry at your funeral. Oh, that was so sad what happened to Whitney Houston. She had money, fame, fortune, all these advantages, all these opportunities, but couldn't stay away from the drugs and the alcohol. This is a sign that something is wrong with your mind, that you can't function and can't find happiness as a human being. You got to turn to mind-altering chemicals. And they put a lot of accolades on our sister Beyonce this week. The first black woman country this and her album is so good. But Beyonce need to take a drink. And you see her and Jay-Z, they got to put some liquor. They probably smoke some weed. They got to have some drugs. Success ain't good enough. You still got to cover your soul with alcohol and drugs and all these other things out here. Because you're still not happy with all your success. They're still not happy in life. They still need the drugs and the alcohol. And the gambling and all these other things because life is still not happy. So what do you expect from the poor? So it is the poor filling up the liquor store. The, the, it is the poor and the middle class those who getting the hell worked out of them. Oh, I need me some weed. Thank the Lord. Let's legalize weed. They so happy. This is a sad civilization. This is a sad place that we find ourselves in. It is sad. You don't drink. You don't smoke. You don't drink and you don't smoke. You the oddball. At least you should smoke recreationally. You know, just to be social. Drink a little liquor just to be social. And then they go to church on Sunday. And even the church said, here, here's a little wine for you. And that ain't enough. And you go home and get the whole damn bottle. I don't want a little taste of Jesus. I want the whole bottle. I want the whole, what is it, five pints that we that Jesus got in his body. I want the whole thing. So you wonder why. The children are in the condition that they're in because the adults are drug addicts and selfish and violent and maniacs. And the list goes on and on. So these children, I can't blame the children because this is the environment that the adults created for them to be born in. And they don't know any better. And they look at an adult that's trying to show them a better way, look at you like you crazy. What's wrong with you? You don't drink, you don't smoke, you're not a whoremonger. What the hell's wrong with you? You don't go to church. You don't go to the mosque. You don't believe in the Bible. What the hell wrong with you? Why are you not like everybody else? And then you use the example from the scriptures. But you don't need a Bible, but you can quote the Bible. Because there are good lessons there. 
And in the scriptures, it tells us that we are in the world. But you shouldn't be of the world. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's and give unto God what is God's. And I owe God nothing. And I owe Caesar nothing. How can you talk like this? So you look odd and you look different because you're not part of this world. I'm in the world, but not of the world. So I don't expect a lot from children. But this is the way of the world. a behavior from so-called adults who really are children. That's why the scriptures say and call you the children of God and you never grow up. This is why the scripture call you sheep because you only a follower, you're not a leader. You only follow, you only copy. And you usually copy the detrimental activity and the behavior of people. You don't copy people. How do you become a millionaire? You don't copy people. How can you have a successful marriage? You don't copy people. How can I build a house? You only copy the foolishness of humanity. How to give a preacher all your damn money. How to work your ass off for somebody else 40, 50, 70 hours a week and get little in return. A damn slave. Yeah, all you know how to do is copy and go to the liquor store like we said before. We don't know how to copy. We don't know how to copy the behaviors of those who would actually help you in this life so you don't have to turn to drugs and alcohol, and religion, and spirituality, you can understand life itself. You've been given life and don't understand life. You don't appreciate life. So you throw life away and you play with life like it's trash because you feel as though you trash. So you begin the process of suicide. Some people actually take a knife or a gun or take pills or whatever they need to do to take life. But some of you, you die slow. And you encourage your children to learn how to die slow. And death is a part of everyday life. Every day on the news, there's death and destruction and suffering and malice and slander and God and these things. Yet there's a church, there's a mosque on every corner. But we still live in this type of condition. The church does not help us. It gives us temporary feeling. It does not solve no none of our problems. It gives temporary relief, like aspirin. Temporary relief, like pornography. Temporary relief, like the drugs and the alcohol. Or the food, those things that we use to escape this life. Woo, man. Mm. Poor children. No adults. Just people with the physical form. But their minds is no better than the children that they are supposed to be teaching. 
They're no different. I want to say And again, use these children as an example because they really don't know. Last month would be four years my mother has been gone from this earth. Four Four years, rather. Four years. And before she passed this life, I would take the children to go see our loved one, my mother, their great-grandmother. We would go to the nursing home. We would go to the hospice to visit. If you have a loved one in hospice or a nursing home or even in jail, you don't know how precious that visit is. When I was locked up, there were people that never got or never had a visit from nobody. And you are alone in this world. There are those who say, I don't need nobody, but the essence of the human being, we know we are social beings. And I don't care what you say out of your mouth. It is always nice to have somebody that you know care about you. There's somebody that you know love you a little taste before you leave this world. And so I, when I was locked up, I appreciate every little visit that I got. And I know how important that is because I had, I experienced that myself. So now we take them or I take them to see their great grandmother. I never had an opportunity to meet my great grandmother. I always wonder about my great grandmother. I never had an opportunity and they tell me she was right down the street. And I never had an opportunity to meet my great grandmother. And she wasn't in a nursing home. She was right down the street. So I'm taking the children to visit their great grandmother. And as we enter the facility, the only thing they want to tell me is, ooh, it stinks in here. This don't smell right. Many of you who do have people locked up, people in nursing homes and these hospitals. It's very difficult to maintain cleanliness because these people cannot take care of themselves. And there are a lot of other things that has to be done for these patients. Then, of course, we know that there are employees in these nursing homes in these facilities that don't give a damn about the residents so unfortunately for me many of these facilities that i visited 
They can smell like medicine. They smell like urine. They can have a foul odor. And many of the residents, it's very difficult to keep them clean, have to put on clean, uh, because they have to, a lot of them, they have to t uh, give them a bath and all this type of thing. I mean, it takes a lot of care. Even so, we're there to visit our, my mother, we're there to visit your grandmother. And so we visit our relative and the only thing these children can talk about, it smells, it stinks. The only thing they can talk about is other patients in the facility People suffer from dementia or some kind of other ailment. That's all they can, that's all on their mind. Can't focus on the visit. It stinks in here. It's nasty. And then when we leave and stop by a grocery store, there's a poor brother. Do you have a dime? Do you have a dollar? He's not. He looks homeless. He don't look, he's not well kept. Oh, he stinks. Oh, he's nasty looking. The children. Now these are children. Adults, adults do this too. So the nursing homes stink. Disgusting to them. And this man begging for, for money, he stinks, he's disgusting. Everything about them is stink, disgusting to them. Now, this is the ironic thing. If you go to their house where they live, you think that you will be going to a clean place, a non-disgusting place. You would think that because of how they talk about other people. They stink, they ugly, they tacky. But if you go to their house, Clothes all over the floor, dishes in the sink, trash never been, ain't been taken out in, in days. But you have the nerve to turn around and talk about other people. What is it the old saying, the pot calling the kettle black? How can you talk about other people and you ain't no damn different. I have known people if you see them in the public they look all clean, they, they dress all fly, driving pretty pretty cars and, and whatever you go into their house and it's filth it's filthy and then some of these people actually have dogs and cats make it worse. You open the door, you smell urine and dog and cat and all this. And they turn around and talking about somebody. You are not in no position to talk about nobody. So I'm bringing this rant. And I'm shaking my head. Ah, something grinds my gears. What's grinding my gears in the in this black conscious community, garbage, whatever you want to call it, the Pan-African community, whatever they want to call themselves. There's a word that they like to use. Negro pen. That's a 
black person caught up in the white man's culture who think he white or whatever. They love to use Negro pen and coon and sambo, these type of things, because I'm better than you are. But look at their house. What make me a what make me a Negro pen? And you better than me. You drink the same water I do as the Negro pen do. You have a social security number and a tax ID if you work. You get a tax refund. You got a stimulus check just like everybody else in this country. Whether you like it or not, Joe Biden is your president. And if they go to war anywhere on this earth and you have children that qualify, they, they can draft your children and they will go or they better go to damn Africa because you're going to fight my damn war. What make you think you better than anybody? Your house just as nasty and dirty as mine is. You're not in no position to call nobody a Negro pen. Then they get angry when you ask them when your ass going to Africa. But that's none of your business. That's none of my business because you ain't doing no damn work. Many of these pan Pan Africans are investing in America. They're not investing in Africa. They are investing right here in the good old United States. They are not selling their property to go to Africa. They are buying more property, investing in America. And they are seeking dual citizenship. If not, if no, if not any citizenship at all, they are investing. So how how are these others a Negro pen and you're not? You getting an EBT card just like the Negro pen? You buying gas from the Arabs and whoever else in this country selling gas? What make you special? What make you different? Like a person said, what make you think your doo-doo don't stink? What make you think that you better than somebody else? Cause you Just because you said, I'm an African. Who gives a damn? You ain't no African as long as you was born in the United States. And when you go to Africa, until you get dual citizenship, you still are an American citizen, you damn Pan-African New European. That's what your ass is. You are Pan-African European. You're not better than nobody. It's thousands of these people talking all this creepy, crazy ass, dumb ass, delusional, insane stuff. The majority ain't going nowhere. And they know they're not going nowhere. That's none of your business. It is my business. Because you asking and suggesting to other black people, soul brothers and sisters in this country, that's, that's what they should, should do. Become some kind of unspecified African. And run our happy ass to Africa so we can be exploited and get our ass whooped in another part of the world. You don't make no laws, you don't control nothing. You go from one slave plantation to another. Now the slave master is an African. And if your happy ass went to Haiti, we know what, what kind of hell you be catching right now. We know this. You got some type of nerve, like these children. Clothes on the floor, dishes in the sink, got a, got a dishwasher and don't use it. 
Dishes everywhere. Everybody stink. Everybody disgusting. Your own house not clean. You're not what you claim that you're supposed to be. Got a lot of damn nerve. That grinds my gears. How the hell are you gonna talk about somebody like you better? A lot of these black conscious type folks, I know it all, I'm, I'm better. But you right here with everybody else. You ain't doing no better. You don't have nothing. You don't, you don't have nothing. You're not, what makes you better? Because I got the teachings. That's all you got. Everybody, everybody got teachings. So the hell what? Your teachings produce what? It ain't producing a damn thing. Except feel good rhetoric. So that you can have the nerve make you think you better. Then when you meet the right person, they will show you you ain't no damn better. Oh, you a hater. A hater on what? You ain't got nothing. You ain't doing nothing. You keep telling me about God. God ain't did a damn thing for you. Your God ain't did a damn thing. Africa ain't doing a damn thing for you. And you ain't doing a damn thing for Africa. Nothing but a bunch of talk. Because you ain't going to give Africa nothing and Africa damn sure ain't giving you nothing. A bunch of baloney. You don't get angry at people because you're not what you claim you're supposed to be about. It's easy to say who and what you are when nobody challenges you. You don't have to prove nothing. We have somebody, lunch break, Chronicles, welcome to our spontaneous uh, broadcast. And you are a Nation of Islam cheerleader. You really believe in that stuff. All praise to love it, I'm like Muhammad. All praise to love it, I'm like Muhammad. I'm not impressed by that. I'm not impressed by it. After a hundred years, almost a hundred years of Nation of Islam teaching, what do you have? You don't have nothing. You think that you're better than somebody. You think that you're saying something. What do you have? You don't have nothing. My people been in Nation of Islam ever since ever since Elijah Muhammad was here. They don't have nothing to show for it. Absolutely nothing. I can deny the teachings. Where's the mother plane? There is no truth. You are about belief. Where's the mother plane? Where's the archaeological evidence that a tribe of Shabazz ever existed? It's nothing but belief. It's nothing but talk. And the sad thing about it, it don't even come from you. It comes from some kind of biracial foreigner. Because you're always following behind somebody. Always up in somebody's backside. You're always a zombie. You're always a damn slave to somebody. And you call him Master Farad Muhammad. He's still your master. 
you still a you still a slave, you still a massa. Wallace Muhammad didn't destroy nothing. They direct that towards him to make an excuse for your failure. Where your work? Where your work now? Wallace is gone. Wallace transitioned with his father. Where your work at? What you doing? What you got? The only thing you know how to do is talk. That's all you're going to ever get is talk. That's all you got to offer is talk. And that's all religion ever gives us. It's feel good rhetoric. Jay-Z and Beyonce and many of these entertainers, they never believed in that. Have more money than the nation of Islam ever had. And they don't believe in Allah. You can win the lottery right now and don't believe in Allah and have more money than the nation of Islam ever had in its, in its whole history. What you got? You don't have nothing. Shout out to Brother Talib. Shout out to uh, Brother Laurel Brown. I'm, I can't do it no more. It makes me sick. I cannot, I, I can't listen to it. I cannot do that no more. Nothing but excuse making. We would not have accepted the teaching in 1930 from him. They accepted the teachings of Marcus Garvey. He was a dark skinned man. No, you still worship white folks. And you're still following up behind somebody. And you're always following up behind somebody. You're a slave. You don't have no mind of your own. You're a zombie. You have nothing to offer. You failed too. Nation of Islam failed too. What make you think you better? You have nothing. Come on this live stream and talk about what you got. You have nothing. You failed too. Matter of fact, what's so pitiful is you knew you was going to fail. Well, you know, the nation of Islam, we're going we gonna to fail. You even talk about it. But we're going to fail. We're going to fail, but everything going to be raised up again. That's what you said. That's really pitiful and pathetic. You know you're going to fail. You know you're going to fall. Who does that? Who prophesied their own failure? And so now you got somebody like Louis Farrakhan, a popular entertainer, bringing all this back up again, and he don't have nothing. Out of the 40 years this man is supposed to be working, don't have nothing. You didn't have everything when the message of the, that is over exaggerated. People were still barely making it, just like they are right now. My relatives was part of it. I saw everything in real time. You didn't have nothing. Most of those businesses was failures. Elijah Muhammad was going in his own pocket. Trying to keep some of that stuff afloat. You don't know. That's why it was easy to fall. That's why it was easy to just fall apart. The Million Man March was an opportunity to really put some, lay something down, but they didn't have nothing to give us. It was nothing but a a church revival. That's all it was. A history lesson. I was there. You can go on YouTube, but I was there. 
Talk about the history of the United States, the, uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, go to church, atone for your sins, and all this other garbage. I don't want to hear that stuff. I thought you had something revolutionary. I thought you had a plan. I thought you had something to give the men. People live in the past. This poor brother or sister, I guess it's a brother, lunch break crowd. They live in the past about what, what we had. This is 2024. Nobody don't care about what we had. And it wasn't all that great then. I know I lived it. I saw it too. It was nice to talk about. It's like these companies. Some of these companies, they try to make themselves bigger than what they really are. Then when the economy have a turn, they start firing people and they have to, and they and all their businesses start closing because if they really wasn't as big as they as you as they as you thought they were. The nation of Islam. People put on a show to make themselves look bigger. It's a little, it's a little lizard that blows himself up to make himself bigger than what he is. To trust so, so other animals think he's so big they don't want to eat him. That's all the nation. That's what a lot of folks do. They put themselves out here to make themselves bigger than what they actually are. And that's what all these organizations and churches, I'm, I'm bigger. And all this person can do is come on here and write excuses. What they learn from a DVD. What they learn from somebody as excuses. People is a hypocrite. Why you ain't no damn hypocrite? See, this is this is what I'm talking about. Folks are always judging other people. You a hypocrite. You a sambo. You this and you that. What the hell are you? I'm not going to check out nobody. Bring their ass here. Bring Silas Muhammad here. You bring Eric Muhammad here. They sound good in their house. It's a whole different ball game when you get questioned by somebody else, it all falls apart. And you copy them. You regurgitate what you heard from them because it sound good. Because it sound good. It don't even sound good to me because I've been there, done that. It don't even sound good to me. A bunch of talk. They don't have nothing. A bunch of cult members, a bunch of zombies who think you think you better than other people. You ain't. And every time these suckers come to this platform, we show them really quick that they ain't like that. Copying and regurgitating. Plagiarizing. Eric Muhammad is not going to come here. I have, I've had a talk with Eric Muhammad before. He don't want to deal with me. I've talked to a lot of these folks before. Get shut down real quick. This is not 1930. People was illiterate in 1930. This is 2024. People are more educated. They have more critical thought now. You're not going to pull that off. Bring them here. They're not going to come here. Those people might impress you. They don't impress me. They ain't talking nothing. Ain't nothing supreme. Ain't nothing supreme about them. Ain't nothing supreme about their wisdom. 
See, this is the thing. We love to talk about folks and think you know it all. But when it's your turn, they can't take it. When it's their turn. They're not going to come here. Stay in your own house with your zombies, with your cult members. You ain't going to come here. Ain't no cult members here. Ain't no damn zombies here. Folks talking about things they don't even know nothing about. Just copying them. Regurgitating what they heard somebody say. They don't know nothing. When I bring something up, it's because I know. I don't need to hear Farrakhan. I don't need to hear Eric Muhammad. I don't need to hear nobody because I know. And if it's speculation, I will say that. Or if it's my belief, I will say that. I'm not going to come on nobody's chat room. I'm not going to come on no video regurgitating some garbage that I heard. That's why it's difficult to mess with me because what I'm talking about, I know. And I'm going to stand on what I know. Not because what I heard from a video. You don't know. You don't know nothing about Wallace Muhammad. You don't know nothing about the inner workers of the nation of Islam, you don't know. The only thing you, only thing you can do is believe in what somebody say. And people love to lie. Contrary to popular belief, Elijah Muhammad can lie. Contrary to popular belief, Master Farah Muhammad can lie. You can continue to live in delusions and fairy tales and mythology. You can keep doing that. I don't do that. And that's why you'll never get nowhere. Living in La La Land, living in fantasy and fiction, hallelujah land. You ain't no better than Christians are. You ain't no better than, than the Christians or any of these other people that you make mockery of. You can read everything that you want to. It don't mean it's true. So what? You, you read a book. Reading a book don't mean it's true. Doing your so-called research don't mean that you came to the right conclusion. It don't mean that. It just means you read some stuff. That's all it means. It don't mean that it's true. We think we better than others. But I'm looking at the results. What have your reading got you? Nothing. You have nothing except excuses for being a failure, being a damn loser. A hundred years, this stuff ain't got us nowhere. That's not my fault. It's quite obvious. A hundred years. There's no argument because you can say anything that you want to. Time. Time has proven and shown nothing. And you want to hold on to that which makes you a loser. The teachings clean people up. So, so they can make money for the leadership. So Elijah Muhammad can live in a big house. Farrakhan can live in a big house. That's why they got cleaned up. That's all I see. You got cleaned up so that you can be a damn zombie. So you can be a damn cult member. What did it do for Malcolm? It put him in the grave. He died broke. Didn't have a damn thing. In the movie Malcolm X, Sister Betty asks Malcolm, we don't have nothing. You put all your life into, the, into this. What, what we, we don't have nothing. Those people aren't your friends. But Malcolm was a zombie. He couldn't see what was going on.
I'm not nobody's zombie. In the teachings of the nation of Islam, I was given a book called The Meaning of FOI. And the meaning of FOI, Elijah Muhammad said, I do not make, or the FOI is not robots. So that means you can't program me. The white man not going to program me. The Asian man not going to program me. And Elijah Muhammad not going to program me either. I have my own mind. I have my own ability to know right from wrong. I am still myself as an FOI. You don't understand that, zombies. I'm not your cult member. I respect you for being the leader, but you're not my God. You're not, I'm not your damn slave, sir. If that's the case, might as well just stay a Negro opinion. You go from one slave plantation to another. You was on one slave plantation, and now you're on another slave plantation where everything that you do benefit your slave master. These people get nothing out of the nation of Islam. They get nothing out of these organizations and these teachings. They get nothing. Speaking of loser, we're going to get out of here. Speaking of loser. I'm tired of talking about losers. I'm not into that. You want to you wanna waste your damn life in that? Go ahead. I don't do that. Loser stuff. Speaking of loser. Now, like I said, I don't keep up with a lot of these folks. I don't. I'm just not into. They have nothing. I, they say, they've said the same thing. They're not progressing. They haven't done nothing. If they were progressing, if they actually was doing something, I would help them. I'm not them. I would help them. I heard, I heard Elijah Muhammad, I mean, uh, I heard that Tariq Nasheed now, Tariq Nasheed, we had a, a back and forth. And Tariq Nasheed don't know nothing about me. Tariq Nasheed only got angry with me because I question what he does. I'm not talking about his family. I'm not talking about his dog Scruffy. His shirt. I'm talking about his ideology. That's all I'm talking about. And he don't like that. A lot of these folks don't like their beliefs. They don't like their ideology, ideology question. I actually enjoy the Hidden Color series that he does. I have that here at the house. Hidden Colors, I believe it went to number four. If there was a five, I don't have that. But Hidden Colors, I, I enjoy Hidden Colors. I respect Tariq Nasheed. In, in fact, I respect all the brothers and sisters. I respect their intelligence. I respect their talent. But don't think, don't you come in my face and make you think that you better and smarter than I am. If you better and smarter than me, then you need to prove it. I don't give a damn cause 100,000 people listen to your happy ass. That does not prove you better and smarter than me. They don't like being challenged. I'm not talking about your mama. I did not cuss you out. I'm not using profanity. I'm questioning your ideology, your opinion, your so-called strategy. This is not personal. They don't like that. 
But when you heard, but when you heard Tariq Nasheed talk about Angel Snuff number seven, he want to try to talk about how I look, which he really can't. <laughs> he really can't. <laughs> you, know, you know, I come on here, I know I look sharp. And sometimes I come on here in my pajamas. Sometimes I can come on here. I can come on here any kind of way the hell I look like. What what do I could be making a video looking like a homeless person on the street? What do that have to do with the opinion, the ideology? Has nothing to do with that. He don't know anything about me. So he's trying to attack those things he don't he can see because he don't like somebody your 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 chump a pitiful chump see you're not gonna these folks not gonna mess with me in person and whenever they talk about the reality's temple they try to attack me as a person they never attack the ideology the opinion or the vision of Operation Exodus Mississippi, they tried to attack me. You don't even know me. So what? So what I got gray hair? So what I got a big nose? Who gives a damn? That's all they have. That's why when the flunkies come here, because the big boys never going to show up, when the flunkies come to the chat room, when the flunkies come here, they get ate up, not because of me, because they want to bring that regurgitated, copycat, plagiarist garbage here. And they cannot even get it off. They cannot, e these people cannot even explain it. How many times have we had flunkies come here and I sit back in the cut, well, it's your show, go ahead, talk. They talk about, they might talk, what, five minutes? Duh, duh. That's all I got to say. Duh, duh. That's all you got to say. What you come here for? They, they're just copying somebody. They get hyped up over what Eric Muhammad said, uh, what Tariq Nassib said, what, what Tahaka Bay said, what Sanetta said. They get hyped up over that stuff and, and can't and then when it comes to explain, they cannot explain. Here you are, explain it. Teach us. I'm not giving you 15 minutes of fame. I'm giving you an hour, an hour and a half. What do you need? Duh, that's all I got to say. Duh, duh, duh. <laughs> Clown ass folks. And the best thing that you can do is write your comments in the chat room. Because you're not going to come here because you can't explain a damn thing. Just repeating what you heard from a DVD. What somebody else said. Bring their ass here. Bring the root of it. They're not going to come here. Had a brother on here talk about I was hurting his feelings. He felt like he was in a courtroom. You're damn right you're in a courtroom. And what's wrong with that? Yes, you are. Your, what you're talking about is on trial. You're damn skippy. I don't mind being on trial. But even if I'm wrong, I appreciate you. You show me my error. I appreciate it. It makes me stronger. It makes me better. Because I'm not loyal to nobody except the truth. And you can find truth in any vessel. I embrace Nation of Islam teachings. I embrace more science teachings. I can embrace the church. I can embrace anywhere because there's, there's truth. As the scripture said, even the devil, there's truth. But I'm not gonna bow down, and I'm not, you're not, you're not the truth. You contain some truth if you can see that. And I'm not gonna worship you, worship you 
and be your damn slave. That's not going to happen. You can take your divine happy ass somewhere else. Shout out to the dark, the dark side of the moon. <laughs> Let's bring this to conclusion real quick. It never fails. I only wanted to talk 30 minutes. It never fails. And we didn't even have an intro, intro video. Shout out to our Deacon uh, Twin Pyramid. Shout out to our Deacon um, Soul Brother 85, as always. Now, why y'all didn't tell me? Because I don't listen. You, you know I don't want to hear all this other gobbledygook. Most of these people be talking. But I missed out on the action. Tariq Nasheed and Tahaka Bay actually went to court. I, I, would, I wish somebody would have told me. I, I wanted to keep up with that kind of action. They went to court for real. We have people running their mouth. I'm going to take you to court. I'm going to sue you. I'm going to do. Uh, these guys went to court. They went to court. Tahaka Bay was harassing this man for months and months and months. <laughs> and the only reason why he was doing it, you know, for, for views. So now people get got the view, you getting your ass whooped. You, you know, you know it, it, it reminds me of people that keep messing with folks. And then that person turn around and kick their ass. <laughs> Tariq was trying to ignore this guy. But his platform is big enough, he could not be ignored. Then the idiot, then of course, the idiot actually got on a plane and flew, what, 1,800 miles or whatever? <laughs> this idiot actually got on a plane and went and flew at least 2,000 miles just to get slapped in the face. Didn't accomplish nothing. What is, what is, what is the benefit? What is the benefit of, of flying 2000? What do I look like talking about somebody and then I fly 2000 miles <laughs> just to get slapped in the face in his own video. Now, Tariq said, or when it first happened, Tahaka said that Tariq didn't hit him. But when they went to court, he hit me, hit me right there, right, right over here. He hit me, that, that, that old man right there, him, he hit me right there. <laughs> But you idiot, you made videos. You made videos saying that the man missed you. <laughs> but when you go to court, you want to try to get some sympathy from the court. He did. I didn't even do nothing to him. He hit me right here. See, on this platform, it's like going to court. Would Eric Muhammad do? What Louis Farrakhan do? What Elijah Muhammad would have done? What Malcolm X would have done? All these people. What you do in the in the in the public arena, you can get away with. It's a whole different ball game when you go to court. And Teresa. <laughs> Tariq said that uh, Tahaka Bay actually had the nerve to bring some of that Moore's, uh, what, what do you call it, psychobabble. You know, all that old garbage about the law. 
those courts, that, that don't work in the real world. That don't work. Even my situation. Many of you know that I was locked up for 10 years in, a, in, a, in the crazy house, right? But I took them to court outside of their out of their friends. It was a whole different ball game. You ought to see how scared they was. They were shaking and trembling. <laughs> see, it's a whole different ball game. See, all these teachings that y'all got and all these beliefs that, that work, they work out here. See, you're lucky that we can't you can't take preachers to court for fraud when you take money from people and you don't give them what you promise that's fraud but see the church can get away with that and the courts don't deal with it if you stupid enough to give these damn frosters your money and your time, that's your business. So, the, so you can legally defraud people by teaching God and these lies and selling these feel good stories. You can do that in the name of God. But if you go to court, it's a whole different ball game. They don't care about what you believe. It's not about what you believe. It's about what you can prove. And I know all these comments in the chat room and people want to defend Elijah Muhammad and Farrakhan and Tahaka Bay. That's easy. But in a court, you got to prove. And Tahaka Bay could not prove. And he took the big L. Why y'all didn't tell me about this? <laughs> Cause you know, y'all know I enjoy court stuff. Cause that's how we roll here. Put me on trial. Anybody want to put me? You can put me on trial on my own channel. Who want to put me on trial? You can do it. You can do it on my own channel. You can be the prosecutor and I'll be the I'll be the defense. Whatever you want to charge me with, put me on trial. I don't care. I, I, I love it. I want to be on trial. Because it should, it should not be about who you like. It should be about the truth. Malcolm died. Because of what he was taught. Malcolm was taught protect the black woman. And then these idiots turn around and condemn the man because that's all he was doing. But the leader, the cult leader was involved. If it was another brother, it would have been a different story. But the leader was the one being charged. That's why y'all cult members. I'm not a cult member. And Michael wasn't a cult member. The law is for everybody. If the leader breaks the law, then he needs to be punished. There needs to be something for him too or her. Otherwise, it's a cult. So we had two cult leaders just recently go to jail. This guy, what's his name, Rashad Jamal? I never even heard of the guy. And, and this other cat, what's his name, Nature Boy? These new cult leaders run around with all their hair running around, earrings in their ear, looking like savages out the jungle. And y'all follow these people. What the hell wrong? That goes to show you not in your right state of mind. But see, they... They feed on your low self-esteem. They feed 
on your inability to think for yourself. And all of you are like that. That's why I don't think you know how to do. You have no words of your own. The only thing you know how to do is mimic and copy what somebody else. When I was young, see, I can be truthful. I can be truthful. When I was a young man, when I was a young man, 17, 18 years old, see, I can be truthful. See, I was still a child. I was a teenager. I, I admit, I mimic everything Louis Farrakhan said. I mimic everything that I was reading in the, in the Holy Quran and all the Nation of Islam teachings. I was 17 years old. But see, the difference between you and me, even though I've done that, I'm still not your slave. I'm not going for that. And one reason why I'm not going for that, because I was bullied in my life. And ain't nobody going to bully me no more. I don't want to hear your garbage. Ain't nobody going to run around telling me I can't do this and can't do that. You're not my damn daddy. My daddy didn't tell me what to do. My mama don't even tell me. I'm going to let some sucker, because he divine the hell with you. I'm going to give you all my money. Here I am. I'm washing dishes. And I'm going to give these suckers, I'm going to give Louis Farrakhan getting money all over the country. I'm going to give him my money too. I'm washing dishes to survive. What do it look like for me to give this man, I'm a teenager, my money? They still in the chat room. Chin leading Elijah Muhammad. Elijah Muhammad is dead. It worked. His program worked for him. His family didn't have no problem eating. My people had to work. They had to get that, uh, they had to get a pension. So now that they older, they can live off the pension. The Nation of Islam gave them nothing. They gave Elijah Muhammad thousands of dollars. They gave Farrakhan thousands of dollars. If it wasn't for their work, they wouldn't have nothing. That's the reality of it. They wouldn't have nothing. The only ones who really benefit out of those teachers was, was the high up. The one that was close to Elijah Muhammad. They got all the money. And that's one of the reasons why they wanted to get rid of Malcolm. Because Malcolm was going to bring an end to it. That's the reason why they don't like Wallace Muhammad. Because Wallace Muhammad was getting rid of all that Hasidity, live how in the hog stuff. Your ass going to go to work. That's over with. This is 2024. Still talking about what dead people done. Dead folks, that's over with. I don't give a damn if it was bad or good. It's over, it's done. Put in the chat room what you doing, what you have done. They're not going to do that because you ain't got nothing. Except a bunch of talk. Y'all don't even like black people. You don't even like black folks. All thing you want to do is use us to be a slave for your divine people. You don't like black folks like that. I just saw a video on Facebook. These FOI was beating up somebody. They say it's a white guy. Most people say I couldn't really see if it was a white guy or a black person. I don't know. They out there. What is this? A uh, world star hip hop? If you're a peace lover, why would you want that on the internet? You don't want nobody to see that on the internet, and you bragging about it. If you if you attack us, you get your ass whooped. That's that's world star hip hop behavior. This video has uh, what's it, it's, it was like seventy six thousand views or something like that. These brothers beating up this person, whatever. If you're a peace lover. Why would you want that on the internet? 
That's that's world star hip hop stuff. But it's, let's break. Still cheerleading for Elijah Muhammad and that Nation of Islam stuff. Malcolm X wanted to come back to the nation because that's all he knew. That's the only reason why. And then when he found out they was not interested, he went on about his own business. That's all he knew for 12 years. Of course he wanted to go back to the nation. I had no problem leaving and staying the hell away because I did not do my, I didn't work like that. This man put in serious 12 years of work. That's all he knew. So of course he wanted to come back to the nation. That was his mistake. In 1962, when they popped the nation of Islam in California, he should have known to get away from them then. When the Los Angeles Police Department pumped their ass, the nation of Islam, he should have found out they wasn't about all that, but they gonna beat up on black folks. Malcolm was a, as, as intelligent as Malcolm X was, he was a zombie. He was a cult member. He was caught up. He believed that he owed somebody something because you saved me. If that's the case, you should worship police officers and lifeguards and doctors and even lawyers, people that save your happy ass. Because they say, matter of fact, they save you for real. All this religious garbage ain't save you. You ain't nothing but a damn slave. Like I said, I appreciate the teaching, but I'm not your damn slave. And I don't owe you nothing. Anybody that find anything that come from this platform that's good for them, you don't owe me nothing because you deserve it simply as a human being. You don't owe me nothing. You don't have to put my ugly ass picture on the wall. You don't have to worship. You don't do nothing except be yourself. You owe me nothing. But these people looking for a slave plantation is a whole different ball game. Master Farad Muhammad. You still a damn slave. I used to wonder about that, and I didn't like that either. Masa Farad Muhammad. I didn't like I didn't like that. I used to be in the temple and the brothers going all crazy over fire car, clapping their hands and stumping their feet. I'm like, damn, that's that's gay as hell. Y'all gay. That lunch break, is you gay? <laughs> you riding the jockey, the jockey strap of Elijah Muhammad, he's a man. Master Farah Muhammad is a man. Eric Muhammad is a man. Where the women in your life? <laughs> y'all, y'all gay? I'm sorry. I'm right here. I don't know what y'all talk. <laughs> Y'all too mas y'all too masculine for me. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I cannot do it. Tahaka Bay should be embarrassed. Damn, he got his ass whooped. Cause I did a I did a search. Tariq said that the judge told you got to take all those videos that he made about Tariq Nasheed down. He made a lot of videos. And I looked, I tried to find the videos. They're not there. Damn, Tahaka, you got your ass whooped. <laughs> 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 
See, that's the way it would be when these folks come here. Because this is a this is the, this is a trial. You are on trial. Your teachings, your ideology, what you about, you're on trial. There's nothing wrong with that. Yes, I am the prosecution. I want to send your ideology, your opinion to jail. I want to send it to hell. Get this charge. You are a fraud. You are a liar. You are a deceiver. You are the Satan that you're talking about. Yes, this is this is a, a trial channel. Only the funkies don't come here. The big boys are not going to come here. And if you ever do come here, you're going to give me my respect. And you're going to give me my respect whether you like it or not. Because you're going to get your ass whipped really, really bad. You're going to feel just like Tahaka Bay. You know, when you get your ass whooped like that, you can smile and you can put on your on this on this face. But you know you lost. You know it's embarrassing. And Tariq sitting all proud, shoulders all up. Wow. Why didn't somebody tell me? <laughs> <laughs> but now I know because the Huckabee is a creep. This idiot tried to flag my channel down. You had to take down all those videos. While you're at it, you should have took the ones I was on too now. But I guess you need my videos so that you can get some views. <laughs> this is what I noticed. I noticed when we was going back and forth, back and forth with the demons of darkness. I noticed they could get more videos from from my video. They could get more views rather from my videos than I could. I'm like, that don't make any sense. <laughs> my child, I'm looking at when they copy my videos and put it on <laughs> and put it on their channel. <laughs> They was getting more views than I was. Anyway, I'm enjoying myself. Knowing what what, what, what Tariq called him out, a turtle. <laughs> a turtle wearing a fez. Got, got smashed. All your Moorish science garbage. Didn't mean nothing. It's just like when I was in, when I was locked up. All that pro-black, all my research, all my, all the Nation of Islam teachers that I had, everything that I knew didn't mean a damn thing when I got locked up. Didn't mean nothing. I had to learn how to seek real knowledge, not belief. The teachings is belief. It's not knowledge. They have, like I said, they have some knowledge. But teaching is basically belief. And I don't need the help of a, of a foreigner. Got to get a passport and get on a boat or a plane to come over here and teach me nothing. That goes to show you how pitiful you are. So if you take away nation of Islam teaching, you ain't nothing. Lunch break, you ain't nothing. If you take that away, you don't have nothing to offer. If a foreigner didn't come to save you, some kind of biracial um, that look that look like a white man, y'all say. They mean you have nothing to offer. So how can you come to me and tell me about some stuff and you have nothing without a foreigner? I can think for myself. I don't need no foreigner to tell me nothing. In fact, I'm going. I'm going to tell them. I 
I'm going to tell them where they need to be. What they should be doing. I'm the leader. I'm the one with the vision. Yes, I know more than you do. And I will prove it. Come to this court. I will prove to you that I'm smarter and I'm better than you. Not as a human being, but with this knowledge. Because we don't deal with beliefs here. How embarrassing it was for Tahaka Bay to go into a court of law and get crushed like that. Woo, man. <laughs> I wish I knew. I wish I knew. <laughs> I wish I knew. <laughs> Lunch break tomorrow. Supreme wisdom. Ain't nothing supreme about it. What's supreme about it? There ain't nothing supreme about supreme wisdom. According to who? Come here and show and prove, prove that it's supreme wisdom. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he was wearing, <laughs> I don't know if he was wearing his Kentucky Fried Chicken hat. I don't know. With the, with the ponytail. Kentucky Fried Chicken hat with the ponytail. Looking goofy. <laughs> Tariq Nasheed was he was laughing all the way with that one laughing all the way <laughs> lunch break still chilling for the nation of Islam <laughs> they woke up the dead <laughs> <laughs> Fantasy fiction. Elijah Muhammad living high on the hall. And yeah, he woke up the dead so they can so they can go to work and pay for his mansion, and all his children can wear fancy clothes, eat, eat the best of food. Uh y'all some damn fools. <laughs> I woke up the dead. And, and, and they still dead. When I was in the nation of Islam, they called people, the brothers and sisters, they called people outside of the nation of Islam lost founds. Like they better. What the hell did you find? You need a biracial white man to sniff his ass. That's what you need. What make you think you better than somebody? You got to sniff another man's ass. A foreigner. You need a, a book that you can't even read without translation. What make you think you better? We don't need no book to read here. And if we do have a book, because I wrote it. And I speak English and I write English. So when, when our people read our book, because it was made for us, you got a book from overseas that you cannot even read. You got to get a translation. You got to get a translation of the book from foreigners. Get out of here. That's why you're not going to come here live. That's why you're going to write, continue to write. I'm glad, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I hope that we're cool. Because it's not nothing personal. Exactly. We don't need to believe anymore. We need to know. And we need to use our own brain. We don't need people from overseas. We don't need divine ass folks. You've been following divine folks. You've been following these Foreigners, it's gotten you nowhere. What's wrong with using your brain? Ain't nothing wrong with my brain. Something might be wrong with your brain. Ain't nothing wrong with my brain. And I would rather follow my brain, whether it's success or failure, 
as long as it's me. I'm not nobody's slave. Message to the black man is not a holy book. Elijah Muhammad never called it a holy book. Elijah Muhammad taught, put the Holy Quran above all books. That's what he taught. When you go to a Muslim house, the Holy Quran that you got from them damn Arabs is above all books, including nation, including message to the black man, our savior has arrived, the fall of America, Anything that Elijah Muhammad wrote, you put the Holy Quran above all of it. Because you following Arabs. That's their stuff. I don't want it. You need it. I don't want it. Anyway, I'm not going to continue to talk about Nation of Islam cheerleading because it don't mean nothing to me. You can write whatever you want to in the chat room because people that come here don't give a damn about that stuff. It's over. We don't do that here. Ain't nobody my master. I don't give a damn about your actual facts. That stuff don't mean anything if you go in, in the real world, it don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing in the real world. It only means something on an Eric Muhammad podcast, a Silas Muhammad podcast. It don't do nothing in the real world. It only do something in the mosque, in church, at one of y'all meetings. In the real world, when you got to deal with real people, it don't mean nothing. This is not 1930. People not illiterate like that no more. People not stupid like that no more. We don't do that here. I give credit where credit is due. If it was not for those teachings, chances are I wouldn't be here. So I give credit where credit is due. But I have evolved past that. Because I don't need that. I don't need that to function. You need that to function. I'm not impressed by that. Don't mean nothing to me. Exactly. There's people who don't know how to read and write, doing way better than Nation of Islam folks are. And they don't know how to read and write. Explain that. There's people that don't believe in God doing way better than people that do believe in God. Explain that. The only one who benefit are the ones in leadership that take y'all damn money. You don't get you don't get nothing except feeling good. That's all you get. But I want to. <laughs> See that Tahaka Bay is a dirty, dirty low down thing. He told me that he was going to stop all this beefing crap and he was going to go but see that goes to show you his teachings ain't nothing he get all his views from beefing and exposing the scammers he's a scammer himself Tahaka Bay supposed to be supposed to have been building this 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 Moorish town village took people money Ain't no, there's no Moorish Town Village. He, he put up this website, told people to come to the website, and they supposed to get special videos or whatever. Where is, what happened to the website? 
is nothing. He's a scammer too. Everything he do fail because he's not what he believe he is. Exactly. What's the purpose of what's the purpose of posting her new photos? It's for views, trying to make money. Just like Tariq, Tariq said, the man is jealous of Tariq, the man is jealous of Sinetta. He's jealous of all these folks. I'm gonna try to bring them down. I'm exposing the scammer. But look at him, but look, but look what happened to you, sir. There's nothing more embarrassing. And there was two things. There was two things in the court, the court had to deal with. And he, he lost it all. He didn't win nothing. How embarrassing. Now, you know it's serious. Because he took all those videos down. Like, like this person took down all those videos calling me a pedophile and all this old crazy thing. They, they took them videos down. Because they know what the deal was. How embarrassed. I ain't take no videos down. <laughs> I didn't take no videos down. When they terminated my channel, they took some of the videos down, but I didn't take no videos down. Exactly. Fake ass Negro. So I want to I want to applaud. I applaud Tariq. I applaud Tariq for doing that. That's an example for all these other suckers out here. Let's go to court. Let's come into the real world. YouTube is not the real world. You can run your mouth and say anything that you want to on a YouTube video, in your church, and in your mosque. It's different when you got to come into the real world. The courthouse, because the courthouse don't give a damn. <laughs> exactly. Flawless victory. And then the sad thing about it is when you put things on wax of which we do when we make these videos, you know what you've done is on video. How you going to lie or try to make up a story when you are on video. People stupid. <laughs> unless I know, unless I'm pretty sure I'm gonna win, I don't wanna go to court. I don't wanna do that. That's embarrassing. Tahaka can smile. He can run his mouth and make excuses or whatever. Uh, it's a wrap. You lost. The big L. The big L, y'all. The big L. You lost. Flawless victory. So, foundational black Americans, two, more science temple, zero. <laughs> And all you clowns that keep falling up behind Tahaka Bay, foundational black Americans, two, Morris Science Temple, zero. I mean, a big zero. <laughs> you know they getting clown. Now, if that ever happened to me, see, you know when you lose. I don't care how you smile or whatever. You know when you lose. Well, the court, the court said rule. But you know.
know when you lost something. You know when you lost. There are people waiting. They want, they want somebody to, 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 to take me to court and beat me up, uh, somebody to come to my channel and, and embarrass me. They waiting on it. And I'm, I'm a nobody. I'm a nobody. And they waiting. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's not going to happen, y'all. It's not going to happen. I mean, you can try. It's not going to happen. Reality will never be defeated by the teachings. Reality will never be defeated by your beliefs and your emotions. Reality will never be defeated. Never. You can try to attack me as a person, talk about my unjust, uh, my unjust uh, stay in a mental institution. You can talk about my pajamas. You can talk about my envelope poster. That's, it's so pitiful. Do you know that people trying to attack me, they attack my envelope. They attack my envelope poster. How pathetic and pitiful are you? That goes to show. That's desperation, frustration. <laughs> you're gonna be, you're gonna attack a poster on the wall, <laughs> but my poster. Hey, look, my poster is women. Y'all be y'all into men. I, I can't do that. <laughs> You're not going to defeat reality's tip on earth ideology. You're not going to be able to debate. You're not going to be able to defeat Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign. Our vision. You're not going to be able to do it. You can help me make it stronger, but you're not going to be able to defeat it. You're not going to be able to minimize it. You're not going to make me look like a loser like your happy ass is. Y'all happy being losers. We're not losers here. I like winning. You don't mind losing. I'm about winning. If I thought Nation of Islam teachings was a winner, I would be doing that. Losing proposition. Pan-Africanism, losing proposition. Hebrew Israelite, losing proposition. And the list goes on and on. Those things make you feel good. They produce nothing. They only make their, the leadership rich and wealthy. They don't give you nothing. And I want you to have something. I wouldn't even feel good sleeping at night. And I know that you don't have nothing. But you so used to having nothing, you don't care. So you accept nothing because you view yourself as nothing. As long as the leaders, as long as you take care of them. That makes you a slave. So you can't come here because I don't want you to be my slave. I want you to be free. I want you to be free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty you free at last. On that note, again, shout out to Tariq Nasheed. Shout out to the Foundation of Black Americans. <laughs> Flawless victory. That's what we're looking for. And I would rather work with you than against you. You should be, we should be together and win together. We're going to talk about that, but something is, something is causing us, stopping us from doing this. And we want to talk about that on our next live stream later on this week or maybe Sunday. I don't know. I, I know that I know that tomorrow is not promised to nobody. So if we can make it to Sunday, we might do it Sunday. It might be tomorrow. It might be tonight. We have something to offer. And we want to put that out so the folks can make a judgment.
and make that choice. If you want to be a loser, that's fine with me. That's cool. Some folks don't mind being losers. Well, in the comment section, you talk about black women. I don't know what you're talking about. Do I talk to black women? I don't know what, what you want. I know there's a section of us. <clears throat> there's a, a section of, of, of us. They want us to talk about black women because we you don't want to deal with black men. I'm not concerned about no woman. That's a distraction. These men talk about these women because it's a distraction from them. What they should. You cannot even, you cannot even live up to your own criteria. So you want to have a distraction and talk about women. I don't give a damn about what women. I don't care about that stuff. If the men are the leaders, if the men are the warriors, then you need to get the men together. Black men not going to come together without them, Angel. You can't get the men together. You ain't going to get no women together. You got to get the men together. Punk ass dude. You got to get the men together. I'm not worried about no woman. What you worried about? That's a distraction. If you're the leader, get yourself together. Believe me, they'll follow right behind you. They follow you to the damn drug house. They follow you to the prostitution house. They follow you to the strip club. They follow you everywhere. Get your ass together. When you fuck, when they, when you Get your act together and go in the right direction. They will follow you there too. Don't have to worry about them. But you can't get the men together because the men at the drug house, the men at the prostitute house, the men at the liquor store. You can't get the brothers together. Don't have to worry about no men, no women. That's a distraction. So, so as you fail, being the loser that you are, oh, the, the women don't do this, the women don't do that, you do. Because you're a loser. You want to blame everybody for your failure. Oh, the women, the children, the dog scruffy, the elderly, our, our dead ancestors. Of course, the white man do this and the white man do that. Every, you want to have an excuse? Blame everybody except yourself. What you worried about women for? You worried about women because you scared of men. You can't get the men together because the men will whoop your ass. They don't want to hear it. Get the men together. You scared of men. What you want the woman for? So you can look up her damn dress. So you can get more babies with her. What the hell are you worried about women for? If that's the only way we can do it, well, how come it ain't done? You've been having the women together with you for over the last 100 years. Look at your condition. You ain't getting nothing together. You got a bunch of babies living in America and the white man taking care of you and that woman and your children. You have not, you have not done nothing. You get these men to build. When these folks came to America, they didn't bring women with them. Men came first. I'm gonna be just I'm gonna be just like Dr. Umar Johnson. When these folks 
first came to America, the men came first. There was no women. Women came later. Wherever these people went across the earth and explored, explored, it was the men. Women came later. Men was the one that opened up the door. But my, see, me personally, I don't care. I'm telling you the reality of things. You want to keep your award-winning loser-ass ways? That's fine with me. I sit back in this in the cut and say, I told you, look. Told you. They still trying to do it, David. They ain't going to work. See, history is on my side. And I learn from history. You don't learn from history. You have a delusional fantasy way of looking at things. I'm looking at things straight from historical, history. I'm learning from history, period. I can see what can work. I can see what don't work. You can keep living in fantasy and delusion you want to. And you can do that to the day that you die. Contrary to popular belief, crackheads die happy. They say they're happy. They die from crack. Contrary to popular belief, there are people who drink themselves to death, but they say they die happy. You will die happy in your ignorance. You will die happy and proud. But we know that crack is death. We know that liquor is death. We know these things are detrimental. But the people say, I'm, I'm happy. And you would do the same thing, go to your grave, happy. You happy. And that's all right. And I'm like Tupac, I'm not mad at you. Folk, there are people that don't mind losing. I'm just not one of them. I'm one of those people, I can look at a strategy and I said, well, that don't work. I like doing that, but that's not working. I'm going to put that to the side because I want to win. It's not about what I like, what make me feel good. I want to win this game. I want to win this thing. It's not about what I like. I like dribbling with my right hand, but I'm going to have to learn, if I want to win, how to dribble with my left hand. But I like dribbling with my right hand. Or be like Kobe Bryant. Kobe dribble with the left. He can dribble with the right. Don't give a damn about Kobe. You do what you have to do to win. Not about what you like. You like to do things. Because I like Elijah Muhammad. I like the Nation of Islam teachings. I like more science. Tips. I like Jesus. It ain't about what we like. It's about do you want to win? So you got to change up your game and you got to be flexible so that you can win. And you wonder why you don't have a ring. And what is that ring? That ring, that ring is your, li your liberation. That ring is your independence. Your, your ring is being, is being viewed in the eyes of the world as a full functioning man, as a full functioning woman, that's your ring. Whether they like it or not. If the Mississippi campaign is successful, will you honor the treaty with the natives in that state? No. Um, do do we do? Can we do we hear things? Or I mean, can we? Come
comprehend what the Mississippi campaign, nothing changes. The Mississippi campaign, the state of Mississippi is still the state of Mississippi. Nothing is going to change. Whatever it is with the natives, that's something that they did had to deal with with the uh, federal government or whatever. And that's just that's that's what that is. That has nothing to do with me, with us. That's a federal government thing or whatever. Why would we want to change anything? If anything, we make things better for the natives. I just don't get it. The Mississippi campaign is not rocket science. I can. It, it, it's not rocket science. Why do we try to make things complex? We're not taking the state over. We're taking control of the state. There's a difference. Take control of the state is not taking it over. This is not a coup. It is not a black state. It is still the state of Mississippi, whatever that was. It's not rocket science, people. Clearly, we don't understand English or we can't comprehend or we purposely want to try to make something out of something so that we can find flaw in something on purpose. The state of Mississippi is still the state of Mississippi. It's not rocket science. Exactly. That's all it is. No more, no less. That's all it's about. And again, this is a trial challenge. I will, you can be the prosecutor. I will be the defense attorney. You can put me on trial. I don't have no problem with it. It's not rocket science, people. On that note, see, and on and, and there's another thing. Now, for me, when I see people not really interested, they just saying stuff just to try to find flaws because they have this idea. Well, if your idea is so great, it's been a hundred years. What have you accomplished? What do you what do you have? You got nothing. That's not my fault. You got a bunch of haters out here. Because you think that you already know. And you don't know nothing. If you knew you'd be in a, you'd be in a better position. And here they go. Here we go feeling sorry for, for ourselves. They discovered a country that had people already. So what? So what if people was already here? They've been doing that all over the earth. Killing folks because people was already there. Europeans ain't the first one. They was doing it to themselves in Europe. Africans was doing it to themselves. They do it in Asia. That ain't nothing new. That's how, that's how patriarchal civilization behavior, that's how that works. So what? That's how it's been done all over this, all over the earth. Nobody don't own the earth. You only own, own so-called own the earth to your ability to defend it. You got your ass whooped. Another man took control of it. Somebody gonna whoop this white man ass and take control of it. That's how, that's how things have been doing all over this planet. Nobody don't owe you nothing. When you big and bad and want to kick somebody ass and take it, then you do it. They don't owe you nothing. These people could wipe you out right now if they want to. You lucky to be here.
trying to make somebody see it goes back to our original topic people trying to call folks out on what somebody else did you do the same damn thing the history that you write says it it's not angel snuff number seven the history whether it's in africa or asia that's the behavior of men in power that's the always that's what they do what do you mean make it right nobody owe you nothing they kick your ass you couldn't defend it they kick your ass and move you out they don't have to make it right they can toss your ass right into the ocean if they want to they don't have to do they don't owe you nothing you conquer You are ruled by them. They don't have to make nothing right. What are you asking about the natives? Are you a native? What the hell are you asking the natives about? You're not even Native American. What the hell, what the, what you asking about the natives about for? What the hell you care? No, you looking for flaw. You looking for error. That's what you're looking for. You don't give a damn about no native people and what they want. Who are these natives? What's what's the what's the what's the tribe? What's the tribe? Who are you talking about? Master Farad Muhammad didn't come to make nothing right. Master Farad Muhammad, according to the tribe of Shabazz. Blame, blame white folks for the evil and, and took them naked and forced them to march across the damn desert. What's humane about that? How they treated Caucasian people. What's humane about that? Then one of the tribal Shabbat tried to blow up the whole earth. Why don't y'all talk about that? Exactly. Always complaining, but never have a solution. Never have a solution. They can't accept the aftermath after Elijah's death. Nothing has changed. Always wanting to point the finger. Always want to judge, but you don't want to be judged. All of a sudden, I'm interested in Native American. That's a bunch of baloney. I'm interested in what's going to happen to the Native American. It's not rocket science. And this poor man still waiting on, on a dead person. Talking about what dead, dead folks teaching from 1930. Like I said, you want to be a little, keep losing. You're not going to waste my time with that. I don't do that here. You keep being the loser that you are. You keep losing. You go to your grave as a loser. You feel good about it. That's your business. That's all it's about feeling good. It's not about anything of substance it don't produce nothing it don't produce nothing at all i'm not going to take in millions and thousands of dollars i'm not going to have a, a thousand people waste their time and their money their energy to be losers You can do that if you want to. On that note, I'm out of here. I just wanted to rant and get that off my chest about uh, the court case with Tahaka Bay. <laughs> loser ass. Speaking of losers, loser ass people. And you can join them. I don't know what you're here for. You want to be a damn loser because you're not going to change my mind about nothing. I've been there, done that. I'm not doing that no more. 
and I was hip when I was a child. You a grown ass man, and you still want to follow and still do dumb ass stuff. And you a grown man. I was a child. I was a teenager when I was doing that stuff. But as I grew, as I matured, I grew out of that nonsense. I grew out of it. I'm not loyal to nobody except winning. And that's all it's about. You helping yourself, all people, everybody's going to win. That's why I'm telling you, it's not rocket science. Everybody's going to benefit. Who, wanna, who wouldn't want to benefit for the place where they live has actually been made better? Who wouldn't want? Everything is better for you. But it's your choice. It's, it's your choice. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. Thank you, everybody in the chat room. Those who are listening and those who will be listening to this broadcast later on. Again, I'm, I'm open. This is a trial channel. You can come here and be the prosecutor, and I will be the defense attorney. You can put me on trial anytime your big head ass believe that you can win. <laughs> I'm not going to revisit no damn Master Farad Muhammad. He's dead. That stuff is dead. Why do you keep putting that stuff in my chest? Get the hell out of here with that stuff. Revisit Master Farad Muhammad. Where? Okay, you want me to revisit Master Farad Muhammad? Where is he? Bring him to the live stream. Bring him to the live stream. I'm not going to call nobody Masa. Exactly. Revisit Master Farah Muhammad. Bring him to the live stream. And I'll be happy to revisit. I'll be happy to entertain. I will let him say whatever he want to say. When you going to bring him? Now watch this. Okay, when you going to bring him? Lunch break. When are you going to bring your masa for Muhammad? You can do all that writing in the chat room. When are you going to bring Master Farad Muhammad so that we can revisit, so that we can talk to him? Because I don't care about your opinion. I don't care what you believe. I want to talk to Master Farad Muhammad. Exactly. Nothing else needs to be said. We are all the 5,000. Thank you again. No, you're welcome. I thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Like I say, um, we have another live stream scheduled for Sunday. Might do it Sunday. Might do it Friday. Might do it later on tonight. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? And I don't need nobody to listen to me. I can do it all by myself. Talk to myself. <laughs> there was a song. I talked to myself. <laughs> you remember there was a song, I talked to myself? Forgot what the, the words were. I don't care. Well, eventually, somebody will listen to my crazy self, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I don't need nobody to listen to me. I don't need the views like that. I'm not making money from YouTube. I just want us to be in a better position. I want us to win. I want us to win. Tired of being a loser. But see, the thing about it is, as long as you a loser, it don't make no difference how I feel. 
I'm a loser too because I'm I'm part of this group whether I like it or not. You ever been part of a team and you try to tell your team, hey man, this is what we need to do to win. Everybody still want to do that same loser stuff. And so it don't make no difference what you say. You lose because they lose because you part of the damn team. But if they ever try to do what you suggest, they probably finally win. I know we can win. It ain't no problem. I know we can win with this. Is it perfect? I'm not going to tell you it's perfect. Like anything, need some tweaks. Because I never thought, I mean, the brother brought up, I mean, his, his question is, is, is valid about Native American, whatever. That's valid. We need some tweaks. But overall, we going to win. We can win. I know we can win. And that's all I want to do. For us, everybody benefits, not just the leadership, these special divine folks, whatever. I don't need to have any credit. You don't have to give me any credit to do nothing. As long as you win and put yourself and your children in a better place. My reward will be going to my grave knowing that you are, are going to a better place, that you are you're doing better. And I will be happy. I'll leave. Woo, I'm like, ooh, they finally made it. Finally headed to that promised land that Dr. King spoke of. Again, thank you so much for listening. Jot down your comments in the comment section. Subscribe. Share our lectures, our video live streams. I thank you so much. And until the next uh, live stream, as our ancestor, Don Cornelius, used to always say as imparting, I wish us love, peace, and soul. And we are 45,000. I think we are. We should be 45,000.